Grand Meowster Chef is a giant feline from Monster Hunter World Iceborne. She cooks up meals for hunters with her team of palicos. We're creating a real-life version of Grand Meowster to celebrate Monster Hunter World Iceborne at PAX West. This is the largest costume we've ever built. Our Grand Meowster will be six and a half feet tall and nearly four feet across. Our performer has to be able to walk, move her arms, move her hands, swish her tail, and interact with fans at the Capcom booth at PAX. To create this massive costume, we're working with 12 artists from two different studios. Wooden Leg Studios will be handling the digital modeling, 3D printing, CNC machining, designing and applying fur, and woodworking. At GSTQ Fashions, we're making Grand Meowster's clothing. That involves dyeing fabric, sewing, stenciling, leatherworking, and airbrushing. We're also bringing in two special consultants to oversee this project. So cook up some snacks, sit back, and please enjoy this special behind the scenes video. Before we can build this costume, we need reference materials. Capcom sent 3D models and 2D images. These are good for studying proportions, materials, and colors. But these files were made for a video game, not for creating wearable garments. Travis is creating new models to make them compatible with 3D printing and CNC machines. He's also designing an internal frame from scratch. This frame will support the costume and help maintain its round shape. We also want our frame to be collapsible so we can travel with it. We're building the frame out of flexible rings suspended by snap tape. We chose this tape because it allows us to make adjustments quickly and easily. Most of the rings are made from flat steel boning, but a few of our rings need to be more rigid to help our costume keep its shape underneath the weight of the fabric. For those rings, we're using PEX tubing. We feel good about our frame, so we're sewing the snap tape securely in place. We need a more comfortable way to carry this frame, so Ginger is creating a special harness. First, she's going to drape fabric on our frame and cut out a crude version of the harness. She'll refine that into a paper pattern and use that pattern to cut out our final piece. Then she'll attach it to the frame with Velcro. She is also putting Velcro pads on the shoulder strap so we can adjust it to different performers. We don't want the rings on our frame to create ridges on our final costume, so we're creating a padded cover out of spacer mesh. Caitlin is installing elastic at the bottom to help keep our cover in place. We're also putting in a zipper and a drawstring closure to make it easier to slip on and off. To round out the shape of the harness, Austin is designing a foam section that'll top off our frame. Grammy Auster's body is beginning to take shape. And she's adorable! Over at Wooden Leg Studios, Travis is working on Grammy Auster's head. He's using a CNC machine to carve out rings from pink insulation foam. These rings will fit together to form a cat head. After gluing the foam rings together, Travis will coat the head in an epoxy called Epsilon. This will give it a smooth surface and prevent the styrofoam from chipping or getting dust on our costume. Later, he'll drill holes into the head to reduce its weight and provide more ventilation. Graham Meowster's face is being printed in multiple pieces using several 3D printers. Travis will remove excess filament from those pieces, then glue them together to form our cat face. To reinforce the seam lines, Kaufman is melting plastic over the seams in a process called ABS welding. Now we have a cat head and a cute cat face. With our torso and body coming together, we can start working on Grammy Ouster's clothing over at GSTQ Fashions. Our chef wears a dress, an apron, pants, and a hooded cloak. For all of these garments, our first step is draping. We drape thin fabric over our form so we can mark out designs in a three-dimensional space. Then, we transfer these marks to paper so we can draw out precise patterns. Using these patterns, we can cut up our fabric. But this isn't our final fabric. We're creating mock-ups first, using cheaper material. This way, we can test out all of our shapes without risking our more expensive fabric. 
Now that we're happy with our mock-ups, it's time to visit the fabric store and select our final materials for Grammy Ouster's dress, apron, cloak, and boots. We want fabrics that look realistic and functional. Rich colors and textures will make our mascot look like she jumped out of the game and into real life. So we're choosing fabrics with dense weaves and varied fiber content to give this costume visual depth. We found a fabric we like for the dress, but it's not quite the right color. So we've decided to dye it. We need a pretty big pot for so much cloth. Lindsay is going to heat the water in our 30 gallon pot to 212 degrees before adding a custom blend of dyes. Then she'll toss in the fabric and stir it for 20 minutes to achieve just the right color. Afterwards, we'll rinse the fabric in cold water and wash it in a washing machine. And now we have a texture and color that's perfect for this dress. Unfortunately, we weren't able to get as much of this fabric as we wanted. Even though we bought every yard of this fabric, it still wasn't quite enough to make the whole dress. So we're gonna have to rework our patterns. This turns out to be a blessing in disguise because now we have the idea to make the back of our dress out of a lightweight mesh fabric since it's going to be hidden by Graham Meowster's cloak. Not only does this solve our fabric scarcity problem, it'll make the costume lighter and more comfortable for our performer. To help get in and out of the dress quickly, we're adding zippers to the sides and waist. This is a big character, so we need big colorful stitching. Amanda is using thick green yarn to add a decorative stitch to the sides and hem of our dress. Above the side split, we're putting X-shaped stitches using antique gold grommets and green deerskin leather. Graham Meowster needs an apron to protect her dress while cooking. Our apron features one large pouch in the front and a band that wraps around her waist. We're going to satin stitch rectangles around the edge of our apron, add a bias trim, and then install a polyester lining in the back. The apron will attach to our dress with large snaps, making it easy to take on and off. Grand Meowster is featured in the Iceborne expansion of Monster Hunter World, so she needs a cloak to stay warm. The cloak features golden ornamental designs, including a big crest. Grand Meowster's crest is an updated version of the Monster Hunter World crest. Allison is designing elaborate stencils for this. We're cutting out the stencils across many pieces of cardstock and then taping them together carefully. This is a really big stencil. Allison is creating, cutting, and assembling connecting lines so all of the floating details in the crest won't shift out of place. We're using gold screen printing ink on the cloak. After a couple hours of painting, our stencils can finally come off. And our crest looks amazing. We go in with a small brush and fill in the gaps left by the stencil. Grand Meowster's cloak is lined with tassels. Sophia is creating those tassels by wrapping threads hundreds of times around a cardboard jig. This allows us to make each tassel the same shape and size. These tassels need to be a richer, more golden color, so Caitlin is dyeing them. Since these are a lot smaller than our dress, we can dye them in a smaller pot. Each tassel is getting stitched by hand to the edge of the cloak. Clothes are only one part of our costume. Back at Wooden Leg Studios, Grammy Ouster's face, tail, and paws are coming to life. We've brought in a specialist who has experience sculpting animals and shaping fur. Kim will be cutting a variety of fake furs and shaping them to our cat's face. She's using hot glue to attach the fur to our 3D print. The fur is trimmed to the right length, combed in a natural direction, and then an airbrush is used to add details to Grand Meowster's adorable face. For Grand Meowster's tail, Kim starts by creating a model out of pink insulation foam. This will be used as a form to create our final tail, which is made from plastizote. This is a lightweight, flexible foam that's commonly used in mascot building. Fur is hot glued to the plastizote, then shaved and combed before airbrushing. Travis is preparing to print Grand Meowster's paws. He's designed a cat hand with separate movable digits and realistic claws. He'll install a system of paracords and rubber bands to make the fingers wiggle. He's also making foot pads and toe beams using a soft foam. These details will be painted with an airbrush before being glued onto the paws.
Graham Meowster is a chef in Monster Hunter World Iceborne, so she keeps most of her important ingredients in big pouches on the front of her apron. We have to make sure our pouches are the right size and proportion, so just like our clothing, we're making mock-ups first. For the final pouches, we're using a natural colored polyester canvas fabric. Each pouch has a unique graphic on it. We're cutting out stencils for these graphics, then dabbing acrylic paint on each pouch with a brush. An elastic band will keep the pouch tops tight and we'll stuff the pouches with polyfill to give them a nice round shape. After that, we're adding a drawstring made with a leather cord and colorful hand-painted wooden beads. Our pouches need oversized stitching that will complement Grand Meowster's size. Each pouch is topped off with a different ingredient. We were able to purchase plastic leaves and peppers, but the rice requires a different solution. We're gluing real rice to a styrofoam dome and then coating it with white acrylic paint. Our pouches are connected to the apron with metal hooks. This will allow us to quickly add and remove the pouches. In addition to ingredients, our Grand Meowster carries a giant wooden ladle. We're making this ladle out of actual wood. A CNC machine will carve out the ladle in three distinct sections. We'll sand down the ladle into a more refined shape. These three sections will be socketed together and secured using wood glue. Finally, we'll give the ladle an attractive wood stain. Grammy Ouster will need something to walk around in, which means we need to make her some boots. We're creating a copy of Lindsay's foot using packing tape. We'll design our pattern around this copy. Since cat feet are different than human feet, we want to create a design that'll disguise our performer's feet. We're making mock-ups out of foam because we don't want to waste any of our more expensive leather. Once we have a design we're happy with, we can start cutting up our leather. We're using medium weight veg tan leather. We chose this leather because it's easy to work with, it's moldable when wet, and we can dye it to perfectly match our costume. We need to add some cosmetic details to our boots. Ginger is punching holes in the tops of the boots and adding stitches using a leather cord and a special needle. After that, we can stitch white fur to the top of the boots using a post bed sewing machine. Lastly, we add an oiled red leather strip underneath the fur. This ended up being my favorite part of the costume. We want to make sure our performer is comfortable in this giant costume. To better distribute the costume's weight, we're modifying a hiking pack and integrating it with our frame. This will help put some of the weight on our performer's hips. This particular pack already has channels stitched in for a lightweight set of aluminum supports, but we're replacing them with longer rods to support our big cat head and keep it in place. The backpack also provides a perfect attachment point for the tail. We're suspending it with four straps, which will keep the tail in place, but still allow it to swish around. We're also incorporating an ice vest, a water bladder, and two fans to keep our performer cool on the floor of packs. All of our garments are finally complete, but they're clean and spotless, which isn't very realistic for a chef in Monster Hunter World Iceborne. We need to distress this costume. So we're bringing in another specialist. Ryan is an expert at making props and costumes look old and used. He comes in to airbrush dirt, stains, and other details onto Graham Meowster's clothing. 12 artists have worked on this project for over three weeks straight. We've created garments, props, and furry animal parts. Now, we're about to put it all together. We need to make sure this costume works before shipping it off in the morning. We're rehearsing the assembly process. Our costume handlers are learning what order to put everything on and how everything attaches. The next time this costume is assembled, we'll be at PAX, helping celebrate Monster Hunter World Iceborne. This project has been a great opportunity to create, collaborate, learn new techniques, and team up with a beloved video game franchise. After weeks of nonstop prop and costume making, everyone here deserves a cat nap.
I'm Katherine Jones. If you want to see more cool videos about props and costume making, make sure you follow GSTQ Fashions and Wooden Leg Studios on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Thanks so much for watching and sharing.